Said during a severe water drought in 1976, Thailand, Rice Without Rain is a young adult historical novel by Chinese-American author Min Fang Ho. The story revolves around Jean Da and her family, who are rice farmers living in a poverty-stricken village. When revolutionary students, Sri and Ned, visit Jean Da's farm and introduce communist ideals, Jean Da's father, Int Horn, courageously stands up against their oppressive landlord, leading to his imprisonment as a political dissenter. Determined to fight for her father's release, Jean Da joins her new friends on a journey to Bangkok to participate in a protest. However, tragedy strikes when a peaceful student rally escalates into a violent massacre. Throughout the story, Jean Da grapples with her growing romantic feelings for Ned, making a difficult choice between pursuing a life with him or returning to her family's rural farmland. Rice Without Rain received praise from Kirkus Reviews as a valuable, memorable portrait of a little-known country and Time magazine described it as an easy read with tremendous impact. The title of the novel is derived from a Thai folk song. Narrated from a third-person omniscient perspective, the novel opens in the rural town of Mekong, Thailand, where 17-year-old Jean Da resides with her father Inthorn on their rice farm. The devastating drought has led to a poor crop, making it impossible for farmers to pay their high taxes to the landlords. Jean Da and her sister Dao, who lives with her husband Gon, endure backbreaking work in the fields. They witness the distressing state of Oi, Dao's malnourished daughter, whose health continues to deteriorate. Jean Da and Dao visit the river to bathe when they encounter a group of travelers with urban accents. Despite her attraction to one of the boys, Jean Da hesitates to offer them shelter. The travelers turn out to be students from Thammasat University in Bangkok. The group of travelers include Sri, a young medical student, and Ned, a charismatic advocate for communism who immediately catches Jean Da's eye. Despite initial hesitations, Jean Da's family allows Sri, Ned, and the other students to stay in their village for the summer. As the family's rice harvest fails to provide sufficient crops, Inthorn, Jean Da's father, faces a confrontation with the village landlord, Duzit. Unable to pay the full rent, Inthorn is pressured by Duzit to give half of his rice crop as collateral. Encouraged by Ned's communist ideals, Inthorn finds the courage to resist Duzit's demands and stands up for his rights. Meanwhile, Sri utilizes her advanced medical knowledge to treat the sick locals, which challenges Mao Kam, the village healer who relies on traditional methods and Buddhist meditation. As the summer progresses, a romantic bond forms between Jean Da and Ned, deepening their connection. Ned continues to advocate for communism, inspiring Inthorn to join the resistance against Duzit's oppression. Instead of surrendering half of his rice crop, Inthorn asserts his rights and offers only what he deems fair to Duzit. This act of defiance sparks a chaotic confrontation, leading Inthorn to flee from the police. During his escape, Inthorn is shot in the hand before being captured and imprisoned. In jail, Inthorn endures dehumanizing treatment, chained and confined like an animal. Determined to free her father, Jean Da travels to Bangkok in search of Ned's assistance. Her journey coincides with a plan to deliver a speech at a major student rally held at Thammasat University. However, on October 6, 1976, Jean Da becomes a witness to the tragic Thammasat University massacre, where 46 students are mercilessly killed before her eyes. The violent turmoil resulting from the military coup forces Jean Da and Ned to part ways, their paths diverging in the face of danger. In the aftermath, Jean Da returns to her village in Mekong only to receive devastating news. Inthorn has passed away in jail due to an infection from his wounded hand. Upon her return, she also discovers the tragic loss of her niece, Oi, who succumbed to malnourishment. Additionally, Dao, Jean Da's sister, is pregnant with her second child but has chosen to live with Duzit, Inthorn's adversary, in pursuit of material wealth. However, her plan crumbles when Duzit rejects her for being overweight during her pregnancy. Faced with immense hardships, Jean Da takes on the role of head of the family. Eventually, Ned returns from Bangkok to find Jean Da in Mekong. Their teenage romance takes a back seat to Ned's unwavering commitment to the communist revolution. Jean Da, witnessing the destructive consequences of the revolution, opts to remain in her rural village desiring a peaceful life and the opportunity to raise a family. Recognizing their differing visions for the future, Jean Da and Ned make the difficult decision to part ways and embark on separate paths. 
By the novel's conclusion, the farming tax rate is reduced from 50 to 25 percent, offering a glimmer of hope. Despite the tragedy she has endured, Jinda finds solace in the arrival of a promising rice crop as the long-awaited rain finally falls, putting an end to the drought. Additionally, Dao gives birth to her second child. The story concludes with a sense of optimism, as Jean Da embraces the possibility of a better future. In addition to Rice Without Rain, Min Fong Ho has authored numerous other books, including Sing to the Dawn, Tanjong Ru, and other stories, The Clay Marble, The Two Brothers, Hush, A Thai Lullaby, Maples in the Mist, Brother Rabbit, Gathering the Dew, Peak, A Thai Hide and Seek, Journeys, an anthology of short stories, and the Min Fong Ho Collection. Her works have been translated into various languages, including Thai, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Tagalog, and French. Ho was raised and educated in Thailand before moving to Ithaca, New York, to attend Cornell University. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.